Good morning, good evening, welcome to Karlsruhe. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce Ruka's new model, the Q4 Tasman Series 2, new benchtop OS spectrometer with the enhanced analytical performance, flexibility, and usability. And I do not want to hold you too long. I will just mention the topics for today that will have a little overview of the history of the Q4 Tasman because it's existing for more than one decade already. And then we will have a look at certain features and uh, mod uh, key components in the Q4 Tasman Series 2. I will explain you a little bit the configuration of the different models that are available and mention the recent improvements we uh, were able to achieve with the Q4 Tasman Series 2. Then I will show you a little bit of the advances inside Elemental Suite. That is our new gen next generation uh, platform for the entire optical emission spectrometry product line. Before I then switch over to my colleague Thiago Sousa from Application Lab, uh, he prepared a nice hands on in advance. And then we uh, start with our Q&A session. So there is time reserved in the end to, uh, uh, to answer your questions. Uh, please do not hesitate to type your question in the Q&A panel that you find in your WebEx client. And with that having said, I just start, uh, but I start with the typical requirements that a user has on Spark optical emission spectrometry for metal analyzers. As you all know, OES is the workhorse for all tasks of metal analyzers. So it's an analytical tool with high flexibility. Uh, it's capable to do full alloy analysis with an excellent data quality uh, within a fraction of time, what you have to do uh, compared to WDXIF. And additionally, OS is superior than for light elements, and it's also better suited uh, for trace analysis and lower concentrations. The typical time for an analysis with this class of instruments is between 25 to 35 seconds. That depends a little bit on the matrix that you are analyzing and the uh, material grade, so the special suballoy type that you're analyzing. Uh, other uh, benefits of OES, the sample preparation is relatively easy. Thiago will show you later on also a little bit of this. Uh, for the user requirements to make this a workhorse for metal analyzers, users require highest reliability. That means you have a high uptime uh, even to run a quality control process. Uh, the system must be robust enough even to withstand in harsh environments like in the foundry, on the foundry floor. Uh, and the method itself, the analytics, must also be robust enough so that it works without headaches even in the third shift. Uh, it must be additionally cost effective, so you can expect moderate uh, acquisition costs for an optical emission spectrometer compared to uh, WDXIF. Uh, you have low operational costs and you are able to adopt to changing and future requirements. So, uh, for example, including certain elements or extend calibration on certain elements when this becomes necessary. So this, this is an outline of the method OES and its application in the industry. Let's have a, just a brief look at the principle of OES. Uh, you have a light source and a sample. So the sample is placed over an electrode uh, that is you seen there, the, the round piece. That's the uh, sample. It's located over the electrode. And the gap is filled uh, with argon, the gap between the electrode and the sample. And then you apply a high current, a high DC current uh, between the, an AC current, sorry, between the electrode and the sample. And what you get is you get a stable plasma, you get a lablation of metal atoms, so, uh, and then atomizing of these atoms 
and these atoms also get excited. So, and so the valence, the outer shell electrons get to a higher electronic level. And once they fall back to the ground state or to another excited state, then that means characteristic light specific to this element is emitted. And this light is fed in through the optical system. And the principle of such an optical system you see on this slide. Uh, uh, so that means the, the light is fed through a primary entrance slit onto a diffraction grating where the light is dispersed. And the focal plane of this grating that lives on the so-called Roland circle. And that is the position where you position your detectors. In this example, there are individual detectors with an individual uh, secondary slit. Uh, usually in such a setup you use photomultiplier tubes. Uh, but here, and that's the other possibility, you can also place array detectors like CCDs or CMOS with uh, several thousand pixels. So uh, that is again your wavelength indication. And what you measure is the light intensity of this line at the specific wavelengths because this correlates directly with the concentration of this atom in the material. So that is in few sentences the principle of OES. Here you see uh, different uh, fallbacks from excited states uh, to the ground state and depending on the energy level uh, you will emit different frequencies, so different energies of the emitted beam. So these principles of spark optical emission and spark excitation are known long, long, for a long, long time. And historical and recent improvements in the hardware, in the electronic, but also in the methodology, in the analytic, and the way you evaluate the sample, the, the data, and uh, so especially in the software, uh, these resulted in many additional benefits over the last decades. And just to mention some, you have, we have achieved shorter measurement times, we get, are now able to get better analytical quality of the data. Uh, we reduce the argon consumption and thus the operational costs of these systems. We have achieved higher uptimes with less uh, regular maintenance requirements uh, and introduced also advanced data evaluation algorithms. Uh, for example, that uh, some of them are used for the analysis of non-metallic inclusions in steel. But that's another story. It's not related to the Q4 Tasman at this point. Uh, then, the biggest benefit maybe is the way the user operates the system and the ease of use and the intuitivity of the software and its interface uh, because it must be capable to be run even in the start shift. So to have a little history, I'll give you a little background of the Q4 Tasman the uh, original one that was introduced in 2008 uh, and with a model that was for non-ferrous metals uh, with a new vis optic only. And then one year later that was completed by the introduction of an additional vacuum UV optics that was necessary for the analysis of ferrous metals uh, and then the continuous uh, the development does not stop but what continues further improved. So to give you an example, all 10 bases uh, are available for the Q4 Tasman. That means iron, aluminium, copper, nickel, cobalt, magnesium, titanium, lead, zinc, and zinc, for example. Uh, we have introduced uh, new generations of this digital spark generator, the so-called source that creates the plasma and the spark. And we also, that relates to improved source curves uh, because you have a certain function uh, that improves the ablation and the sample preparation of uh, uh, the material. We introduced high resolution CCD sensors in the Tasman uh, with clear spectrum uh, technology that is an advanced uh, interpolation and unfolding of overlaid peaks. Uh, 
then that improves dramatically the analytical precision and performance. And we have also done many improvements on the spark stand, the way you operate and the way you use uh, uh, the sample and how it handles the argon flow. So one example is the introduction of the coaxial argon flow and a uh, new gas distribution model uh, that was introduced in during this time. And during this time, something else happened because we switched to a complete new software platform uh, to Elemental Suite. That is our next generation software. And a lot of developments happened on this software side, also together with the algorithms applied to evaluate the data. So as our development continues constantly, also the evolution, uh, evolution of the metals and the alloys that continues also. So, and so we are at Bruker continuously driving also the improvement of, ana of our analysis to deliver you a solution that lets you achieve your goals faster, more reliable, and more cost-effective than before. And the outcome of our striving for perfection is the Q4 Tasman Series 2. And with that having said, I want to give you an impression of the visual changes uh, that we have. So on the left side, you see the old model. On the right side, you see our new Q4 Tasman Series 2. So we did not change only the colors, also the housing is a little bit different. We improved the thermal insulation and the robustness against dust of this housing. We have new fresh colors and uh, we also introduced new push buttons that are lit and give you a status indication of what the system is doing currently. You will see it later uh, in a demo session. At the heart of any spectrometer, you will find the optical system in the spectrometer. And here, Bruca with the Q4 Tasman, we introduced multivision. Multivision is an innovative dual optic concept. And the first optic that I want to discuss with you is the vacuum UV optics. Vacuum UV optics means far beyond, below 200 nanometers of wavelengths uh, that will be completely absorbed by air, by moisture, uh, and other contaminants in the, uh, in the system. So that is why you call it vacuum UV. Usually you would apply a, a high vacuum, but it's also possible in the wavelengths that we use. And this optic works from 130 to 200 nanometers to use argon. So a transparent inert gas uh, as a purge gas. So, and these optics are one reason to split the optic and not, not work with one big one is uh, because we need a higher resolution at this wavelengths for the channel challenging analytical emission lines that are there. And these are quite important lines, uh, especially for steel. So another reason to do this is uh, you would need another light coupling. So the vacuum UV optic is coupled via a direct light pass from the spark stand into the entrance slit of the system. You see this here, that is uh, this behind this window. That is the light channel that guides the light into the optic, into the vacuum UV optic. This optic is purged with argon for highest UV transparency. The sensors that are used inside the system, you see the sensors there, the, the, the blue uh, colored things. These are the uh, PCBs for the sensors, sensors are below. Uh, we use these sensors of the highest quantum efficiency in this wavelength range. Uh, the optical system also has a low internal volume, an improved perch design, and careful selection of the materials used inside the system. Why I mention this? Because the setup and the building of reliable vacuum UV optics, so in this wavelength, is tricky. Uh, you want to minimize the argon consumption for purge, that is what requires a low internal volume, and also you want to minimize any evaporation of the material itself uh, that could be photo-ionized and coat your optical components. 
and uh, these must be purged out quite efficiently. That in, and the other reason is uh, to have a low internal surface, so in a low, uh, let's say, chance for evaporation of some contaminants. So these are all reasons to split the optical system in a vacuum UV optic with this special characteristics, uh, because only then you would receive such an outstanding performance, the reduced argon consumption for the purge that we have, and this high long-term reliability uh, that we can achieve with these optics in the Q, uh, Q4 Tasman Series 2. The other part of multivision is the UV vis. Vis is, means visual optics. So that covers a wavelength from 190 to 620 nanometers, uh, making use of an optimized Roland grating. Uh, and the entrance into this optics, the light transmission is done via a special fiber light uh, optics, with, which is capable for even for deep UV transmission below 200 nanometers and is very, very long life, especially against solarization by hard UV radiation. So and with this setup, this optic is not purged, so there is dry air in principle, ambient air in it. Uh, it sh has to be dry, of course. Uh, and, but by this setup, you receive the highest reliability possible with this kind of optics. Uh, I have to mention, okay, both optics, that applies to both, they feature high-resolution sensors with an 8 micron pitch size uh, on the pixels. Uh, they have temperature stabilization, so, and additionally, you can have optional an active thermal control system that works by Peltier to air cooling and uh, holds the temperature constant with a variance between only 0.5 degrees C. And it's also beneficial for the noise, the read of the noise of the sensors, because this is lowered. So it might be an option to think over if it's useful, especially when you work in a non-air-conditioned uh, environment. So that brings me now to the available models um, that re relate due to the split of the optics. So, and the Q4 Tasman is available in three models, and we start with the Q4 Tasman 200. That is ideal for all non-ferrous applications uh, where the elements in the vacuum UV range are not required. And it's the most affordable system, of course, from all three models. And uh, then the next one that comes is the Tasman 170. That starts from wavelengths cover age 170 nanometers upwards. So that means it has the vacuum UV optics installed, but not fully equipped. And that is the choice for ferrous applications because it brings capabilities for important elements like carbon, phosphorus, sulfur, arsenic, zinc, and boron. The last one, the most powerful variant of our Q4 Tasman Series 2 is the Tasman 130. There the vacuum UV optic is fully equipped and that is capable to do analysis of challenging lines like nitrogen, low nitrogen in steel and even oxygen in copper. So that becomes possible with the Q4 Tasman 130. There are other advances uh, like for example, we introduced recently a new optimized source, spark, uh, spark source, that we call Smart Spark. That is our new optimized digital spark source that produces ultra stable sparks in a frequency range between 500 kilohertz to 1000 kilohertz, so 1 megahertz. Uh, it provides very high excitation power, so peak current uh, on the peak and of the discharge curve that makes it suitable for all matrices. And it also applies matrix optimized high energy pre-sparking that prepares really perfectly uh, the sample before the, the measurement really starts. We have a simple preparation step 
uh, an homogeneizing step in of the sample surface and the strict timing of the, the functionality of the sp uh, spark with this variable discharge times that allows you applic application specific fine tuning of spark parameters. So that's very important for future improvements on the analytic. And in the end, that is delivering you an improved analytical precision, shorter time to results because you can maybe cut some comfort times that have been there, some uh, times, so you get a somewhat shorter uh, time to result. You get definitely an improved long-term stability by this high precision uh, smart spark source and in conjunction with the coaxial argon flow, what I will explain you later on the next slide, you also end up with a lower argon consumption of the system. So that brings me to the spark stand. That's another uh, very nice feature of the Q4 Tasman series 2. That is large enough, the sample stage, to accept large samples. It's robust. And it's operated, or the sample is held in position by a pneumatic actuated sample clamp uh, that accepts samples with a uh, height of 120 millimeters. That's quite huge. And uh, it's easy to operate by just a button and brings you improved operational safety and, of course, convenience because you don't need to fiddle with mechanical uh, levers or whatever. And another benefit that it has or that arises is it assures a constant pressure of the sample to the spark stand plate. And that is what you see here, uh, the sample on the spark stand plate and there you have the tungsten electrode uh, shimmed by a non-conductive uh, ceramics. And the coaxial argon flow are the little red arrows that are around the tungsten electrode. So that it means you're shooting or pushing argon out of the electrode onto the sample. So that is where you need it. You need the argon at the burn spot uh, and not in the remaining volume. Uh, on the burn spot, it's quite important to have it to avoid any back diffusion of ambient air if your seal of the sample to the sole is not perfect. So that improves the situation dramatically and uh, that enables us also to eliminate the need for a standby flow on this spark stand, so further decreasing the argon consumption of the system. It also improved the analytical quality with samples of irregular shape, like you often have small pieces, uh, nuts, bolts and so on, wires, tubes, faults, uh, and so on that need to be measured or to be analyzed and uh, that is easy achievable by the usage of adapters and also supported or beneficial is this coaxial argon flow that we have in uh, the spark stand. That brings me to the analytic and the analytical program, the new one that we uh, have for the Q4 Tasman series 2 and as an introduction, we have so-called, what we call, analytical solution packages. These are ready-to-use analytical programs within a given matrix and that contain everything you need for this special LOI group. There, there will be an analytical solution packet for uh, stainless steel, there will be one for chrome nickel steel, there will be, uh, there will be other ones. So for each alloy group, there will be one, and these ASPs, they contain all the relevant elements in this, an individual calibration curve for each of this subgroup, and also standardization samples for the entire matrix. And here you see an example, that's the first slide of our analytical program. You see here three columns, one for each instrument. Uh, these are the 10 bases. Uh, that you have on the 130 and the 170 models. Uh, as mentioned, the Tasman 200 is not available for iron base and some other ferro alloys base. We have also done 
analytical improvements and some of them I'd like to share now with you uh, to give you an impression of how many ASPs we have. We have altogether a number of 61 ASPs distributed over then 10 uh, bases or matrices. And worth to note is that within a given matrix, we can easily set free all the remaining uh, ASPs if you ordered, for example, only one or two. And then in the end, you find out that you need the remaining eight. Uh, that's easily and does not require possible and does not require any service intervention or any other complicated things because they are already there but just protected. Uh, we also extended the calibration range for many elements in many matrices, especially for the high concentration range, and have also some new additions. And two really nice ones I want to share with you. First one is scandium in aluminium base. Uh, that is possible from 8 ppm to 0.6% in the following um, packages in the aluminium 100. That is our coding for the global aluminium program that you use uh, to get an overview or to get uh, results over the entire range. But it's also included in the aluminium 140. That means aluminium magnesium alloys. The next one that we have is carbon in titanium base uh, that has been extended and now it's running from 28 ppm to 0.16% in the titanium 100, the orientation program for the titanium base, but also in the titanium 130, which is our uh, coding for titanium, aluminium, vanadium, niobium alloys. And brand new, we are introducing in Q2 next year uh, Q1, sorry, in Q1 next year, the capability to for high nitrogen analysis in steels, especially duplex steels, because they have high nitrogen, in the Q4 Tasman 170. That has not been available before, this capability. That will be new in quarter one next year. That brings me to the software part of my little introduction to you, uh, I would like to share some of the features of our new element, Elemental Suite with you. Elemental Suite is Bruker's new, uh, not so new, it was introduced uh, some years before, but with every new version and every release, it is getting better and better and has new convenient features and with the version 3.0 and above, we introduced very, very nice features. Uh, but generally, Elemental Suite is the common, based on the common platform, also shared with other brokers, so with Bruker uh, AXS here with the XRD or the XRF, they all work on the same, let's say, software framework platform. And uh, Elemental Suite is then plugin based uh, the architecture, so that means we are very flexible in adding new plugins and uh, adding features to Elemental Suite in form of dedicated plugins. Elemental Suite operates all Bruker OS systems and means that is able to cover the entire range of applications from MCI, metal cleanliness inspection or inclusion analysis, over automation to uh, only routine measurements on the smallest model that we have. Elemental Suite covers them all. And Elemental Suite does something else. It brings you really intuitive productivity into your workflow. Workflow is a good point, a good, uh, because in Elemental Suite also introduces guided workflows for more complex tasks, like type standardization uh, and so on. And that is done without restricting you in your routine operation. Uh, some other nice features you see here, for example, you have easy switchable uh, layouts, so you can arrange your results in different and ways, and you always have the possibility to scale your fonts. That is very convenient for 
uh, older persons like me that wear glasses. Uh, that's quite easy and an often requested feature that uh, makes this makes this numbers a little bit bigger. Uh, no problem with Elemental Suite. We have other advanced features as standard, like automatic average and limit checks. Uh, you have in the report a professional really re reporting system where you can adjust and modify your reports. And but some highlights are then uh, also universal export or publishing to any SQL database. So you can, of course, uh, export to any file in CSV or in plain text format or in XML. But often uh, the requirement is to write directly into a receiving or into an intermediate database. And that is really easy and possible with Elemental Suite uh, and that makes data transfer to higher level systems a snap. Another nice feature is the new analysis viewer that we have in Elemental Suite. And it's really fun to work with. Uh, you have different options. You just define your search, your initial query, and then you can group and filter and uh, arrange by various methods. You can have really pivot power by dragging. You can drag every column header to, to this position here, and you see now it's grouped by quality, and when you enter your mouse cursor in any of these fields, you have a different uh, additional filter criteria that appear here, so that you can uh, really play around with and create multiple views of your data uh, within some seconds. And that gives you the use of your data that you have never been able to create before. The best of it, it's uh, that further information is only one mouse click away. So whenever you have a result in, in the analysis view of Elemental Suite, one right click and you can query the internal grade library or you can query against total material, the most complete uh, grade library available on the market. Uh, you can also create quality control charts like what you see uh, uh, there. Uh, that gives you an overview of the sample over the time together with statistical values that are plotted. And you can, of course, easily report, print, uh, selected results from the analysis viewer. So, and that is a so nice feature that many customers, they can get rid of a dedicated limb system or some data administration uh, that they have been required uh, in the past in addition to uh, the operating software of for OAS. Another great feature that is relatively new for us is Total Materia. As Total Materia puts the power far beyond a normal grade library that contains would contain only the chemical composition. Uh, total Materia contains much more. It's the most complete uh, database available on the market. It contains more than 300 uh, 50,000 alloys from more than 75 countries, so that's really international. You find Indian, Chinese, whatever uh, norms and standards in it. Uh, the best database is useless if you don't find anything. Queries to total material are done by their patented uh, SmartCom algorithm. And uh, one point is that our OEM version that we can offer and that we have integrated optional into Elemental Suite that you see here, that are the search results against total material appearing inside Elemental Suite. That is the so-called desktop version uh, or offline version that does not require any internet connection and additionally uh, you can use it with up to 200 exports to fill the internal database of the great library of Elemental Suite for limit cards and so on. But that's not it. Total material is much more. It does not contain only the chemical composition, but much more data, more than 15 million properties, physical properties, chemical, mechanical, metallurgical data, uh, all. Uh, heat treatment diagrams and so on and so on. It also contains proprietary data sheets that you might not find elsewhere. And the best is that it really allows you to drill down. 
product. So you can look for certain mechanical properties and tell Total Motiba, hey, list me uh, all the alloys that will fulfill my requirements and vice versa. You can also, for example, find equivalence uh, to foreign materials and comparing these alternatives side by side on the properties, on the chemical uh, composition or on the physical uh, composition. So when you do not know how a 316L is labeled in China, Total Materia knows. And that is almost the end of uh, my part. I want to highlight that the new brochure for the Q4 Tasman Series 2 is already on the website. Please feel free to have a look at www.bruca.com slash Q4 Tasman or slash OES and drill down further to the new webpage of the Tasman Series 2. Uh, require the brochure if you are interested, inquire with our worldwide sales channel and last but not least, if you are further interested, you see us again when you request a video demonstration of the Q4 Tasman Series 2. And with this having said, I would like to thank you uh, that you joined this presentation. And I now would like to hand over to my colleague Thiago from the Applications Lab. See you in a few minutes. Welcome everybody to our OES application lab in Karlsruhe, Germany. This year has been very challenging to everyone and made us rethink and remodeling the way that we all work. As you can see, we have a lot of new features in our new Q4000 series 2. And I would like to show you some of those features today. Uh, for further information, please contact our sales team worldwide and we can arrange uh, for you a live demonstration here from our lab. Uh, you will be able to see your samples be measured and we're going to have the chance to discuss in more detail what is your application and the need that you have and the best solution that you can have. Uh, to measure your sample with OES is very simple and you just need to place your sample in this box and plate here and we just close the clamp. We have a pneumatic clamp here to close it and to fix the sample on the place. You just press the green here to start, and then we are already measuring. As you can see in our software here, it's made to be simple, and it's used to be simple. Uh, as you all know, OES is a reference analysis technique for metals. And metals are divided in larger groups, in basically two groups, ferrous and non-ferrous. The non-ferrous, uh, for example, we have aluminum, copper, uh, tin, lead, zinc, and so on. And on the other hand, we have the ferrous, which by far is by far the most common metal that we have, is the iron. And iron is also divided in two different groups, uh, where we have the steels and the cast iron. Uh, and on the steel group, we can break even further to, into low alloy steel and into uh, high alloy steels. And in the high alloy steels, we have the stainless. And that's what I'm showing you here today, a stainless steel sample. Stainless is a, sample, is a steel with high concentrations of chrome and nickel and different other elements, of course. And we have different grades for that. And grade is the name that is given to, to the metal and is defined by the properties of this metal. Uh, in OES, we are mainly interested in the chemical composition. And each country uses different norms to define the grades, but they are very similar and equivalent. Uh, in this case here, I'm using the sample 1.4404, that is defined by the DIN German norm. And we can always query these uh, grades from our partner software, Total Materia, that is linked to our software. And this integration with a software make it really easy to, to analyze uh, your samples. Uh, here we can enter the, the sample ID field 
and search in the database for the grade. You can have your own internal database that you can search for the materials. Here I have a big one and you can add uh, the material that you're looking for, the grade, so 1.444. And by the way, this is also well known as uh, stainless uh, steel 316L. So every, a lot of people know that by the 316 L then if you just save and close now we can see in the screen here we are having the giving ranges for this uh, element uh, for F the definition for this element so for carbon for example we can go up to 0 0.03 for chrome we have 16.5 percent up to 18.5 percent and in nickel we have 10 up to 13 percent and so on and that's what defines the grade here and that's what we are looking for with OES uh, to have a reliable measurement of your sample that you can define the chemical composition of your metal. Once you're done with your measurement, so you can just click in the complete analysis and you're going to save this in a, our internal database. And after that, you can query and check what the measurements were made with the system and keep the controlling of it. But another important thing to have a good analytics that uh, it's a common question is uh, to have the sample preparation done well. Uh, the sample preparation is done by two methods, basically the most common ones, grinding and milling. Uh, I prepare my sample by grinding uh, here. So just quick as the measurement with OES, you just need to place a sample with a sanded paper and then you have your, your sample prepared and it's ready to measure with your system. Uh, coming back to our software, so just to finalize here, I am going to do another measurement for you. And that's what we're looking for. So the repeatability and uh, how precise it is uh, your measurement. So you can see here in view analysis, you can also change the view. Then you're going to have this sort of view is most preferable where you need, where you have a big screen. So you can use this one to, to see it. Uh, here we having everything in the range in this, in this specification. And I personally prefer the other view, this one, where you can see everything and that's what we're looking for so the repeatability of the measurements you see here we have really good reliable values with this sample so now just complete the analysis and show you quickly the view analysis here the internal database that i mentioned before we have it here the sample that we measure now and the timestamp uh, and the single measurements and all the other elements here, the average value and so on, and all the measurements that were made before. So, and then I would like to thank you and hope to hear from you soon. And let's go back to the studio because now we're going to check for the questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>